Good morning to the saints of God. We do apologize for our delay this morning. Uh, technologically, and Brother Rick is running behind this morning. So we will go ahead for the sake of order and to get our class started this morning. So we hope, trust, and pray everybody's doing well. And we will get into the word of God this morning. Let us together pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. It is our fervent prayer, dear God, that the word of God, that we, as we go to your word today, Father, that we do it with simplicity and teach with boldness. In Jesus' name, amen. A very special welcome to all of those that are joining us via the Zoom platform as well. We hope you are safe. And our thoughts and prayers go out to those in Texas. And we know I'm looking at our sister Beverly. Hope the family's doing well. She, she nodded her head. Thank God. We got our sister from Texas, uh, Beverly, here with us. Uh, and just we just never know. We just never know. Let's turn to our Bible, Luke chapter 19. Luke, the 19th chapter this morning. Luke chapter 19. Luke, the 19th chapter. And we always want to make sure we put ourselves in position to see the Lord, put ourselves in position to share the word of God, put ourselves in position to not only see uh, and interact with Jesus, get to know Jesus, put ourselves in position to address whatever we need to address. Have you ever heard the phrase, get your house in order? And it, that's where it starts. I had a, a business meeting last week and a uh, pretty big worldwide international organization. And they mentioned to me, they said, Gail, you know, the first thing we're doing is getting our house in order, getting our house in order. And so what does that mean to you, getting your house, getting my house in order? And as we think about that, Luke chapter 19, we're going we're gonna to talk about a man uh, that had challenges, there's some physical challenges, but he understood where he needed to be. And in Luke 19, beginning at verse 1, and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And when you think about Jericho, you think about the fortified city, you think about, you know, when they uh, marched around Jericho, if you will. And so most of it, we're going to talk about a fortified city in our sermon today as well. But he, Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. Couple things here. Now, if you look at verse two, Zacchaeus was chief among the publicans. And for, the, for our internal audience, you just raise your hand and I'll call on you. We're making someone interactive. Uh, what was a publican? I heard, I heard tax. Very good, Valerie. A publican is a tax collector, Sister Caraballo just accurately stated. And so now, what, with what esteem was a tax collector held in society? Not in high regard at all, Brother Charles. They were not held in high regard, and many of them would extort people. Now, what does it mean to extort? I don't want to insult your intelligence, but as a tax collector, they would make little side deals. They would, you know, again, uh, you give me this, I get it. So you help me, I help you. Wink, wink. So here's Zacchaeus. Heard that Jesus was to pass through Jericho. He was chief among the tax collectors. He wasn't just a tax collector, Natasha. He was chief among the tax collectors. And the Bible says, and he was what? He was rich. And he sought. Here it is. Verse 3. And if you look at the steps to get our house in order, let me just give you some practical things here. The steps to get our house in order. Step one, know where Jesus is. Amen, saints. Step one, know where Jesus is. Jesus is not in the denominational world. Jesus is not in your horoscopes. Jesus is not in some, uh, any kind of palm reading, all this other foolishness. So people want to do something and people are desperate these days. They say, what can I do to just to get closer to a higher power? And a lot of that is rooted in selfishness because of the pandemic, because people see the frailty of man. If somebody doesn't see the frailty of man now, they're absolutely blind, Teresa. Because we all see it. I mean, regardless, even people that don't even, quote unquote, aren't religious, see, huh, this thing is, you know, you got to be careful. So that's a given now. But people are searching. So if you want to get your house in order, step one, know where Jesus is. Amen. So here's a man that's not held in high regard in, the, in society, a tax collector, chief tax collector. He was rich, but he sought 
Here it is. So it's not enough to know where Jesus is. That's step one. Step two, you got to seek Jesus. Imagine, and I don't know if any of you have ever experienced, and of course, I've been down here. Let's see, we've been in South Florida now about 28 years. I had never experienced anything about it with a hurricane, ever. Blizzard of 1978, I remember that in Toledo, Ohio, where the snow was packed up like mountains in front of our house, in front of our apartment in Ohio. But severe weather, and so it's one thing I've never experienced, well, I haven't lived through a hurricane now. We, there was one storm, we went up to Tampa, Gales and Fool up there. And the power went out. And then we noticed, because Tampa had not been hit with the hurricane in over 100 years. And I'm thinking, okay, let's go get some food. Gas stations were closed. I'm going somewhere with this. Stay with me. Gas stations were closed. Everything was closed. We couldn't find food. And I had about a quarter of a tank of gas, Lyman. Now, you know, country boy, you got to preserve that gas now. And I'm driving around, and I got to the point, what if I run out of gas? And we found a little, we saw all these people lined up in a shopping center. And there was one family sitting there with a propane tank cooking food. So I got the food. And then I had to, then I finally found a gas station. The line was around the corner. So I sought food. I sought gas. But if I couldn't find the source of it, you just go, you just live it, going through your life aimlessly. And so here's my point. Zacchaeus had the earthly wealth and position that was in high regard, but it brought in wealth. So you can have all that you need physically and not have Jesus, and it's not enough. Amen. So one, seek Jesus, or excuse me, know where Jesus is. Two, seek him. And how foolish would it have been for me with a family sitting in a hotel uh, that was running on a backup generator, and I went out to get some food. So I, I knew, but I didn't know where the food was. But once I found it, Aldrich, I saw it. What did Jesus say? Seek, and you shall do what? And you shall find. And so, first of all, know where Jesus is, and then you got to seek him. What does it mean to seek? What does it mean to seek? Sit back and wait. What does it mean to seek? Tell them to come into your heart. You come to me. Ain't that something? What does it mean to seek? To actively search, to active, to do those intentional things that will bring you what you desire. If you know where Jesus is, seek him. Do the necessary things that will bring you into a relationship or that will mitigate. Mitigate means to deal with. That will accomplish what you are you absolutely desire. Having said that, Luke 19, for those that just came in and those that are staying with us, we're in verse three. So he knew where Jesus was and he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the press because he was of little stature. So to be clear, if you know where Jesus is, two, this is all about getting our house in order today, by the way. Know where Jesus is, seek Jesus, do that which is necessary. I was having a brief conversation with a sister before we started class. It's very brief. This against commending her for bringing visitors with her, too. That's what we need to do. Share that with others. Because you never know. So watch this. Number three, in the order, know where Jesus is, seek Jesus. But number three, be prepared. To overcome challenges. Be prepared for obstacles. Be prepared for obstacles. I like seeing y'all writing these notes now. One, know where Jesus is. Two, seek him. Do what's necessary to get it. And then three, be prepared for obstacles. This applies to every aspect of our lives. When you think about it, I've met a lot of people. And I certainly I connect dots every day. That's just what I love to do and I love to help people. But if somebody is seeking a job, you may know where a job I mean, is, you may begin, but you don't do anything to seek it. I don't know if you know anybody like that. I've had, you know, again, just friends, associates, all of that, who may know of, of a job, but at the end of the day, don't, don't seek it. I need, I need to get some money. You, you, you got your resume out? No. You ain't seeking it. But you, just, you just want some money, but you're not doing what's necessary to get it. So in Luke 19, in verse number three, he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press because he was a little of stature. What does little of stature mean? He was a short man. 
He was small, he was a small guy, Brother Aldridge is short. And so if you ever, he, again, you know, he trying to seek, he knew where Jesus was. He sought Jesus. But then there were some challenges. There was an obstacle. Luke 19 and 3 lets us know that. What does the word press mean? Last week we talked about the press. The one with an issue of blood came from behind the press. That word press does not mean the media. By translation, it means crowd. So he was short. He couldn't see Jesus because of the crowd. He knew where he was. He saw him. Was he prepared to overcome obstacles? Now, when you face an obstacle, there's a couple of things you can do here. One, he can just turn around and say, well, I tried. We do that sometimes. Let me just look at, let me look at the, let me look at our Zoom audience because y'all look right here. We do that. Well, I tried. Are we prepared to overcome obstacles? People will talk about you. They'll be envious. They will not be quote unquote friends with you. Your own family may question you. You may question yourself. But the man saw the obstacle. And let's, let's hasten on now. Luke 19, we're in verse number three. He could not for the press the crowd because he was a little of stature. And he ran before. Wait a minute now. What number are we on? We're on number four. One, know where Jesus is. I got my virtual board here today. Know where Jesus is. Two, seek Jesus. Three, be prepared for obstacles. Is that, is that all right? Y'all keep me honest. Is that right? I got a virtual board today. Y'all work with me now. So number three, be prepared for obstacles. But now number four, y'all ready? Y'all better get this down. I'm going to quiz all y'all. Everybody that's here physically, you got to show me something. You can text it to me. Take a picture of it. Number four, think about the next move. Number four, think about the next move. Wait a minute. Where was he? He, he couldn't get, couldn't see Jesus. He was short because of the crowd. So he, the Bible says, Luke 19 and verse number four, he ran before. Ran before whom? He got in front of the crowd. I'll never forget. I'm glad Hogan's here. Avid golfer. And Steve Roy Grant probably on the line too. I hope in Bible class, Palm Bay. I remember the first time I went to a golf tournament to see Tiger Woods. And you talk about a crowd of people now, Lionel. First hole, hat. Second hole, hat. And I had my bride with me. I said, baby, we got to go to hole number eight. We're going to go three holes ahead. And it's going to be, and guess what? Everybody's following him hole by hole. I said, I'm willing to miss him on five, six, and seven. And I get to eight. And I'm in the tee box. That's where you, you hit the ball. Amen. Only hope you know what I'm talking about. I'm in a tee box right there. And here, and then all of a sudden I hear the people running. I said, no, no, we are. I said, baby, stand right, stand right. Stay next to your man now. She was right there with me. Help me, Brother Audrey. I was like a little kid in the candy store. I'm sitting right there in the tee box. I'm number eight. And yet I see the crowd running. I said, here he come. And a few seconds later, I see that shirt. I look, he, I look, he looked at me. I was like this. I didn't say a word. I said, I'm right here, and there's Reverend Charles, and not even closer than that. There's Tiger Woods. My point is, I wanted to see him. There was a crowd. So I thought about the next move. So we, I think that's number four, right? Number four in your notes. Think about the next move. So what did the Zacchaeus do? Short tax collector, publican. Zacchaeus in verse number four, and he ran before. So Jesus was passing through Jericho. There was a crowd of people surrounding Jesus. He couldn't get, he knew where he was. He saw them. He understood that he saw the obstacle, but he thought about the next move. And again, folks in business and certainly spiritually, we got to be more proactive about the next move. Our soul can be saved, Brother Rick, if we think about the next move. We got saints of God who just are like almost it's like a stalemate. They're almost frozen, neutralized because of a current situation. And I don't say this out loud. Think about something you're challenged with today. But you know where Jesus is. Are you, make, are you doing the intentional things to draw closer to him, to increase your faith? When you know what the obstacle is, what do they say? The first step in dealing with anything is to admit it. But we got saints of God that don't admit nothing. How you doing? I'm fine. No, you're not. 
Don't say you're fine if you're not fine. And let me give you some phrases. I want to make this practical. This is Bible class. If you're not fine and someone says, how are you doing? Here's a few things you can say to prevent lying. Y'all ready? Pray for me. You may not be ready to share your whole soul right there, but when you tell somebody, you look at this Valerie, I'm just going to use Valerie's example right, right now, my sister. How you doing, Brother Gil? Pray for me. What does that say to her? This brother dealing with something. Well, now we all can, we all need prayer every day. But when you ask me, how am I doing? And I say, pray for me. This is a, a learned tactic. Because if you ever had a microphone in front of you and a camera there, uh, and I've had to go through this formal training where you don't have to answer the question. Jesus did this all the time. You don't have to answer the question. I take, my answer is going to take you where I want you to go. I've been asked the question great to me. So are you saying that you, you, you hate homosexuals? Well, the Bible says. See what I just did? God loves everybody. But the Bible addresses that issue of sin. And so we want to talk about sin. Let's talk about what sin. Let's find out what sin is. See what I just did? You take people where you need the next move. Because people will set you up. You all know that, right? Did they try to set up Jesus? All the time. And he would take that question and take them where he wanted them to go. That's what it means. So again, for someone, if you don't get to the point where you get so, I'm all right. Everything's okay. And if you know everything's not okay, you just lie. And that's a sin. I'm not here to make you feel bad. I want to help you, help all of us, grow closer to Jesus. Step one, get your house in order. How do you get your house in order? Step one, know where Jesus is. Step two, seek Jesus. Step three, be prepared for challenges. How am I doing? Amen. Step four, be prepared for the next move. Luke 19, verse number four. What did he do? And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Hole number eight, certain golf course. I'm there. Tiger was on three. I was on eight. That's a few moves ahead, and I was right there. Yes, I had to compromise a few things. Yes, I missed some things going on. But I tell you what, I was in position to see the man I wanted to see, and that's what you need to do. You may have family in your way. You may have uh, despair in your way. Whatever's standing in your way, get, get it out of the way. Maybe you got to run before. Maybe you got to let people get out of your life. You may have to let some people go. And put yourself in position to see Jesus. Why did he climb up a sycamore tree? Remember, he was the short man. So now up in a tree, now he's in a, he's in a sycamore suite. So it's all how you frame it. Y'all get that sycamore suite? Not sweet, S W E T S U I T. So now he's got a great, he's got a bird's eye look, a bird's eye view of Jesus. He knew. So watch this. He had to pay attention. So if you want to talk about the next move, pay attention to the details. You can call that number five. I'm going on number five right now. I'll give y'all some. Write this down now. Pay attention to the details. So one, he thought about his next move, but he was in position. He knew where Jesus was going to be. How do you know that, preacher? Well, Luke 19 and verse number five, he ran for, rather, he ran before, climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. He paid attention to detail. Not just any sycamore tree. He's like, he knew the path Jesus was on. He paid attention to the details. Call me on number five. That's my good. Thank you. Well, number five, pay attention to the details. Amen. And so now, he knew where Jesus was. He sought Jesus. He prepared for obstacles. Amen. Thought about the next move and paid attention to detail. He wants to get his house in order. He didn't say, I tried. At any point, he could have given up, Harris. So any, you put any obstacle and use the same basic formula, especially rooted and grounded in God and our faith in God. And he paid attention to details. Watch this. Luke 19. We're on verse 5. Say amen. You still with me? Luke 19, verse number 5. And when Jesus came to the place. What place? Where Zacchaeus was. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up. Now, this pales in comparison to Tiger Woods looking at me. I was, I was like, I'm going to say, you know, you don't want to talk to Tiger. You know? My husband said, like, what's up, Tiger? Me and get me and Chantel. He, he looked at me like I'm looking at Hogan right now. Hogan, like, is he Hogan staring at me? I was just like, I kind of looked, I couldn't stare him down. 
Well, some. But here's my point. He came to the place, Jesus, where Zacchaeus was. And he looked up. Jesus saw him. Coincidence? I don't think so. Luck? I know it's not luck. Christians don't live by luck. Don't wish anybody good luck. And if you got a rabbit's foot in your pocket, you might as well throw it away. I don't want to know if you got one. I've grown up as kids, full disclosure, Rick. You know, we, we had red, I don't know where we got them from. Yeah, just say it. Rabbit foot in your pocket, it's good luck. So Jesus does not reside in superstition. Amen, saints. Horseshoe above your door. Now, y'all may have one in your garage, and maybe this is if that's a country thing, that's cool, but don't be don't, don't, kind of ain't gonna bring you luck and gain faith in God. There's a lot of things in pastimes that people just do. We as Christians need to know where he is, seek him, prepare for obstacles, think about the next move, pay attention to details. Jesus came to that place, Luke 19 and verse 5, and he looked up and saw him. Here we go, and said unto him. And if we're on number six, I think we're on number six now. Be prepared. Be prepared to respond to Jesus. Be prepared. In other words, be prepared to respond to Jesus. Be prepared to act. Because again, if you seek him, then once you find him, guess what, Aldridge? He's going to tell you what to do. And remember the rich young ruler ran up to him. Oh, tell, me what I, tell me what I need to do. I've been obedient from my youth up. Say what you have. He wasn't, he wasn't prepared. He saw Jesus, knew where he was. But guess what? He went on his way. Sorrowful after that because he wasn't prepared to respond. So don't talk all this stuff about, you know, I want this, I want that. Okay, when you're, now when you're in position, what are you going to do? Y'all all right? I'm trying to stay within the contextual setting, but that was such a good example. I want you all to recognize that. Not everybody that seeks finds. Because you got to seek by faith. You got to be prepared to do what Jesus says. There's a whole lot of people that are worshiping today that love Jesus, that want to hear from Jesus, but are not prepared to do what he says. You got a lot of people assembling today that are getting up, dancing, all that. They want to please the flesh and they want to dance in Jesus' name. Let me look right at America, the world. There's a lot of people that are doing things in Jesus' name today, but are not prepared to do what he says. The entire denominational world. If you truly, if you know where Jesus is, you seek him, are you prepared for the obstacles of selfishness? Then not, what did Jesus say? Deny yourself. Then take up your cross and follow me. You ready to give up all the hooping and hollering? You ready to give up uh, titles? You ready to give up my church and, and be added to his church? That's the reality. Luke 19, verse 5. We got to hasten on. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste. That word haste means hurry up. And come down. Get out of that tree, Zacchaeus. Come on down. For today, I must abide at thy house. Be prepared for, to respond to Jesus. Zacchaeus. Come on down from there. Because I got to abide at your house. What is it? Was Zacchaeus ready to respond? The answer is in verse 6. And he, and, and he made haste. He hurried up and came down and received him. So you got the rich young ruler went away sorrowful based on what Jesus said. Here, Zacchaeus, who did all those things necessary to get his house in order, or prepared to get his house in order, I should say, came down. Listen to Jesus, is ready to respond and receive him joyfully. So if we're on number six, be prepared. Don't be, excuse me, don't be surprised by the results. When Jesus tells you what to do and you do it, why should we be surprised? When you raise your kids, I'm thankful to God. Brother Rick, for our, you know, for my nephews, your children, my children, and all the faithful kids. When you raise them, you teach them the truth. Now, when they get to the age of, you know, again, they can grow up and do their own thing. But again, when the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go, Proverbs 22 and 6, when he is old, he will not depart from it. So you, again, we all are 
free moral agents. We have, many of us have children. Make sure you invest early in the right things. All our, you know, everybody will sin, but the bottom line is when you make an investment, you do what Jesus says and you respond to what Jesus says, don't be surprised by the results. Zacchaeus did what he said, verse six, came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured. Because see, when you, if you're not surprised by the results, then guess what? When, you, when you're not surprised by the results of what Jesus says to you, look at verse seven, be prepared. Be prepared for envy, jealousy, and backbite. Be prepared for the enemy, I should say. We know there'll be obstacles as you seek Jesus. Guess what? There's gonna be obstacles after you find him. And the obstacles after you find him, the devil knows. You think he's, he's not happy you're seeking him, and he's certainly not happy that you found him. And this is where we have saints of God that have left the church. I thought this was supposed to be, my life would be so much better. Well, it is better. You're a Christian now. But all these people are. So did you not know as you were seeking them, were you prepared for the obstacle? Did you think about the next move? And when you found Jesus, have you done what he says? Well, yes, but. Well, guess what? Are you surprised by the results? Y'all with me? So now that you're a Christian, well, I, I haven't found this. I've been looking for this. But are you? So again, so you then obviously are surprised by the results because your disbelief, you've obeyed the gospel, saints. But you're not, now you're downtrodden because of envy, jealousy, things in your life not working out like you want it to. It goes back, to, it's a question of faith. He received Jesus joyfully. Verse seven, and when they saw it, here come the naysayers, be prepared for the enemy. They all murmured saying that he was going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. They're going to talk about you. They're going to talk about Jesus. You will not get a ticker tape parade because you are now a Christian. And it may even come from your own household. It may come from quote unquote close friends. It may come from even fellow saints. I have seen envy and jealousy in the church. Let me say that again. I have seen envy and jealousy in the church. It has caused some to leave the faith. It has caused some to just even, oh no, I don't, I don't wanna deal with that. Anger, frustration. And Zacchaeus stood, verse eight, and said unto the Lord, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. The legal term for what Zacchaeus just said is restitution. See, what precedes restitution is repentance. So if you're not surprised by it, I'm going to stop counting because I forgot what number I'm on. If I, you know, again, as you think about Jesus not being surprised by the results, preparing for the enemy, Getting your house in order means you have to be willing to repent. And you need to be willing to pay the restitution. Let me just let me just pause for a minute. Because when it comes to repentance, if I watch this, if I stole something out of Lyman Baker's truck and I was baptized the next day, I'm a Christian now with his toolbox. <laughs> All my sins washed away. If there's an opportunity, if there is an opportunity, because see, he's got a soul too. Say, brother, I was wrong. Because with a clear conscience, I'm not gonna walk around with his tools knowing there's an opportunity. And so now this man, Zacchaeus, recognizes who Jesus was, recognizes what he has done. And he says, if he wanted to make sure he was prepared, he was he had a penitent heart. I'm ready to change. If I have wronged anybody, but not he was rich, right? And a tax collector. He didn't say I'm gonna give him back dollar for dollar. 
Verse 8, latter part. I will restore, if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, if I have lied or cheated or extorted anybody in any way, I restore him fourfold. Four times what I have done. I will make sure. I'm willing to go above and beyond to make sure that I do right. And in closing, and Jesus said unto him, Luke 19 and 9, this day, today, is salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Brothers and sisters, again, in order to get our house in order, Jesus will do his job. He has done his job. He is doing his job and he will do his job. To get our house in order, it will take intentional actions on our part. And this practical spiritual application applies to every aspect of your life. Many times people get stuck. I'll close with this last example. I went to a business yesterday morning with my son, Jordan. And I called ahead and I said, I need one. I went to the place and he said, I said, well, I need two now. They were like, well, no. I said, can I get two? And the lady actually froze. This is so. Said, oh, we were just thinking about just one. I said, you're a business, right? I said, I'm willing to pay for it. I need two. I don't know. I said, okay, have a nice day. Did a Google search, found another business, same business. I need two. Got them right now. Who got my money? The one that was prepared. And two seconds after I made the phone call, I got a text. Here's the address. I walk in, I said, it's a pleasure for me to do business with you because one, you're prepared, two, you responded. And three, I didn't even have a previous appointment, but you, boom, you took care of it right there. Brothers and sisters, we have opportunities as children of God. Don't be frozen when the world comes at you. It may not come the way, the devil's not gonna be so obvious. When the diabolical one comes at you from different angles, be prepared to respond. Our time is up. Uh, we pray to God and hope, trust, and pray that something was said today that will cause you, Zac that through the lens of Zacchaeus, we hope, trust, and pray that you'll be better prepared to keep and get your house in order. Let us together pray. Gracious God, our Father, we are so thankful for another opportunity to teach your word. It is our fervent prayer, dear God, that we will take your word and help strengthen our faith to do those things necessary to please you. Father, help us keep our house, get our house in order, and to keep our house in order. Father, we know that your son was sent because of your agape unconditional love. It is our prayer today that we will reciprocate and show our love for you in each and everything that we do. Be with us now as we close out Bible study and be prepared to enter into worship in Jesus' name.